The Chicago Bears take on the Seattle Seahawks in Game 2 of the NFL preseason at 7 p.m. this Thursday. What should we take away from this game? Watch this video to find out. What's going on guys? I'm back with another Chicago Bears game preview video which I'll be doing for every single preseason game and regular season game as well this year. So if you guys want to see my uh, predictions and previews for every Bears game, definitely be sure to subscribe to my channel and of course for the post game reactions as well. Which should be coming out to you guys right after the game ends, but... Let's just get into this video, okay? So we're taking on the Seahawks in Seattle on ESPN, okay? So this will be a nationally televised preseason game, uh, the Bears' first nationally televised game of the year. Now, obviously, it's only preseason, but still, you would like to put on a good performance for the national audience watching, which I'm sure there will be a lot of people watching because the Bears have a very big fan base all across the country, and people are starving for football anyway, so they're going to tune in no matter what teams are on the TV. But... Getting into this preview video, I'll be going over some basic information about this game, how long starters are playing, which players you should be looking out for, etc. I won't be talking too much in detail about matchups or the score prediction because that doesn't matter in this game. It is only preseason and the final score does not matter whatsoever. But let's begin by talking about how long starters will play in this game. And according to head coach Matt Eberflus, he said the starters will only play 6 to 10 snaps in this entire game. Okay, They're only going to be in here for a series or two at the very most, which is pretty unfortunate because I wanted to see our starters out there for a little bit longer because the coach did say that he expected to play starters for a good amount of the preseason, but he said that he's not going to do it too much in this game because it's a short turnaround, okay? It's going to be a short week coming off of a Saturday game. You got a Thursday game next, which that's not ideal for NFL preseason, okay? It really sucks that the NFL gave us a Thursday night game in preseason. It sucks enough they have that in regular season, but it sucks even more in preseason because these games do not actually matter okay so you don't want to risk too much injury by having your guys out there for way too long so what i think is going to happen is that if the starters score on their first drive if they score a touchdown on their first drive they'll be kept out for the rest of the game but if they don't score a touchdown if they don't score any points they'll probably be in there for another series if they go like three and out or something and you know after that then it's going to be the backups and so not ideal obviously but we are seeing the starters in here for at least a handful of snaps and hopefully they score a touchdown on the snaps that they get okay this is a game that's going to be on national tv and it's going up against a pretty poor defense for the most part i will say okay the seahawks allowed 32 points to the steelers last week okay they allowed 14 points to the first team offense in the first quarter okay they scored really easily the Steelers offense did now the Steelers offense obviously has way more playmakers on it than the Bears offense does but still looking at the state of the Seahawks defense and looking at how much talent they lack right now the Bears first team offense I hope would be able to score some type of points in this game we didn't score a single point with the first team against the Chiefs but we should be able to do that against the Seahawks um in my opinion so I want to see guys Justin Fields go out there score a touchdown on his first or second drive the offensive line has to be a lot better in this game than it was in the last game against the Chiefs, they allowed uh, pressure on 50% of Justin Fields' dropbacks last week, which is not good enough, guys. Okay, Justin Fields did make a handful of very impressive throws in that game, but most of them had pressure in his face, okay? And you don't want your young quarterback to be in that situation half of the game. And if the O-line can put together a better performance, I think we will see a score in this game, okay? So really look in this game at how the starting offensive line rebounds off of a pretty poor game, I would say, last week against the Chiefs okay I want to see Braxton Jones rookie tackle Braxton Jones continue to ascend in his development okay continue to get better last week he had tough matchups going up against Frank Clark and George Karlaftis who gave him some trouble sometimes but let's see if he can bounce back this uh this week against the Seahawks defense look at how right guard Tevin Jenkins will perform in this game okay he's probably one of the biggest players to watch in this game because if you guys missed it He's been playing at right guard in the last few days of practice for the Chicago Bears with the first team offense. Okay, the first time he's been starting on this offensive line under this new regime. So if Tevin Jenkins has a good good day starting at right guard, I could definitely see him being a starting right guard week one of the NFL season. Okay, because it's still pretty early right now. We still have a little bit under a month until the regular season and a lot can change in that time. Michael Schofield had a bad game last week against the Chiefs and Tevin Jenkins obviously being young, being a lot more athletic, he has way more upside in the system as a guard than Schofield does. So it would be the best case scenario for the Bears if Tevin Jenkins goes out there, dominates, has a good game, shows he belongs at right guard, and ends up being a right guard for the rest of the season. So definitely look at Tevin Jenkins, how he performs at his first stint 
at right guard and also look at the interior too guys i mean sam mustafer will probably be starting in this game i will say he looked better than he has in previous bears games but he's still not a great center in my opinion so hopefully he has a better game than i'm thinking he's gonna have um left guard cody whiter hopefully he continues to be solid and right tackle probably is going to be larry borum in this game okay riley reef has not been playing in preseason games for whatever reason so larry borum should have another chance to prove he belongs with the starters with another strong performance you know against the seattle seahawks so Hopefully the starting offensive line does good. I'm also looking at the receivers in this game, especially rookie Valus Jones. Okay, the guy that we drafted in the third round missed last week with the injury, but he should be playing in this game for the first time in the Bears uniform. And I'm really interested to see how he does, okay, in game action. Last year with Tennessee, there was a lot of, you know, times where he showed he was way faster than everybody on the football field with his shiftiness, with his agility. And I want to see if that will translate against NFL defenses. I think it should because he tested pretty well. He's been blowing past some of our cornerbacks in camp already but it's going to be a big game guys for Vilas Jones because he has to prove he can you know contribute to the Bears offense this year because we need him to contribute. Cole Komet also might be playing in this game okay he did say he's 100% um but he didn't know if he was playing for sure but I'm thinking he probably will play a couple snaps because he is fully healthy now and that's going to be a big you know security blanket for Justin Fields not only a security blanket but also a guy that will be schemed up to get some targets in this offense because Luke Getzey has stated multiple times that he wants Cole Komet to be a big part of this offense so hopefully we'll see that on display this Thursday night against the Seahawks but that's the first team offense um looking at the backups then the main guys I'm interested in here are obviously the end of the receiving depth chart so all the guys on the roster bubble they have to have good games if they want to prove they belong because right now Tajay Sharp has been you know succeeding with the first team offense so if anybody besides you know anybody behind Tajay Sharp wants to make this roster they're going to have to ball out and have a crazy good game okay guys like Daz Newsome guys like Isaiah Colton and Simba Webster right now they're on the outside looking in to make this roster but with a strong performance maybe they could change that eventually so that is the offense okay I already talked about the offense now let's go to the defense now starting with the first team defense and I gotta talk about which quarterback we'll be facing off against so Drew Locke actually tested positive for COVID um, before this game so he's not going to be playing in this game at all Geno Smith will be starting and Jacob Eason will be his backup I'm not sure if they have any third string quarterback behind that because Drew Locke is not playing but it's probably only going to be those two if I had to guess and that's not exactly a you know a list of really talented quarterbacks okay obviously Geno Smith has played in this league for a while but he's not really a starting level quarterback in my opinion so I'm really hoping our first team defense can do well against the Seattle Seahawks first team offense okay get pressure on Geno Smith they have a rookie left tackle right now Charles Cross who replaced Dwayne Brown in the offseason now Charles Cross is very talented but he is a rookie so hopefully our passer should, should be able to get to the quarterback you know early and often in this game okay guys like Alquadine Mohammed, guys like Travis Gibson I don't think Robert Quinn will play in this game because he is a vet and doesn't make sense to play a vet in meaningless preseason games a guy that we already know is pretty good but you know our other pass rushers should be able to get a decent amount of pressure on Geno Smith I also want to see you know our secondary make plays in this game okay plays on the ball coach Flus has stressed how important takeaways will be for this defense so let's see a couple takeaways by this defense we almost got one by the first team offense last week by Jaquan Brisker we did get a couple with the backup defense but I want to see the first team offense get their hands on the ball I also want to see how Kyler Gordon will look in this game guys okay our first draft pick of this year Kyler Gordon will probably be playing in this game according to coach Flus. he practiced the entire week he's fully healthy now so I don't see any reason why Gordon would not play and this will be a strong test for him in his first game in the NFL there's a lot of pressure on him to be a pretty good player early which is kind of unfair to him because you should be giving players time to develop young players time to develop but we pass on a lot of good you know receiver prospects to draft Kyla Gordon and Jaquan Brisker so both of them you know they're gonna have pressure on them to perform this year to justify you know not selecting the receivers but I'm, I'm confident guys that Kyla Gordon will be a good cornerback in this league he's had some struggles in camp going up against Vilas Jones but that's only practice okay we'll see how he does in a real game like setting so definitely look at Kyla Gordon also look at Jaquan Brisker again man I mean these are valuable reps for him as a young guy in this league he had a very fantastic game last week against the Chiefs we'll see if he can keep that up um, against the Seattle Seahawks and otherwise you know look at the backup defense as well guys okay last week the backup defense had an insane performance we basically didn't allow any points after you know after the first half right I think we allowed a few maybe but 
We got pressure on the quarterback consistently. We had backups like Jack Sanborn go crazy and absolutely dominate the game, which Jack Sanborn should be playing a majority of this game again, guys. Okay, he is a backup right now, but he's going to rise up the depth chart pretty fast if he has another strong performance like he did last week against the Chiefs, okay? That performance was absolutely crazy, making plays left and right. And our, you know, our first team linebackers didn't exactly impress. So I want to see if Sanborn can put together another performance that, you know, makes the coaching staff want to put him with the first team defense. So look at Sanborn again. Also look at how our backup secondary does guys like Lamar Jackson. Okay, Lamar Jackson, I'm really thinking he might make this roster at this point because last week he had a pretty decent game, I would say, in coverage. He's made a lot of plays in camp, a lot of plays in the ball pass breakups, interceptions, pick sixes. So I want to see Jackson have a pretty good game. I want to see how DHC and Crookshank do as well. They're pretty talented backup safety. So hopefully they make a couple plays on the ball. But yeah, that's pretty much all the players I'm watching in this game. As for a score prediction, I'm predicting the Bears to win by a score of 23 to 20. I think our first team offense will get a touchdown. Then our backup offense will also put together a pretty decent performance going up against a pretty porous, you know, backup Seattle Seahawks defense so let me know what you guys think about this game in the comments down below what predictions do you have which players are you watching out for specifically and i'll be back with my post game reaction thursday night but hope you guys enjoy the video as always bear down <laughs>